how to do the things but again yes i'm doing the same thing so this is i mean uh, the topology uh, the two are the spine and the two are the leaves leaf one and leaf two spine one and spine two leaf one is having id 101 leaf two is having id 102 spine having id 103 spine two is having id uh, 104 uh, there are two ESXi connected, uh, you know, on this, there are three VMs, web VM, app VM and DB VM. And the app, uh, web app and DB VM subnets are, uh, the app VM is a 10, 11, 3.224, 10, 11, 2.224 and 10, 11, 1.2, 1, 2, 3. It's just like DB has a, you know, 10, 11, 1, app has a 10, 11, 2. And web has a 10, 11, 3. three servers. Uh, I mean, virtual machines are there, and they want to talk to each other, right? So it's just like uh, if I talk about the uh, the logical, you know, uh, construct. Let me draw that. So this is having your spine. Two spine is there. Two leaves are there and they are connected right and in that there is a ESXi server which is having you no know, three VM virtual machine uh, one is web one is app and one is DB and app so 10.11.1 slash 0 slash 24 10.11.2 slash 0 slash 24 and 10.11.3 slash 0 slash 24 and you and they want to talk like a user will hit to the web server web server will talk to app server and the app server will talk to DB server so this is how you know you are uh, I'm, I'm going to configure it so let's I mean uh, it, let's talk about <coughs> the task <coughs> In this task, uh, we have to configure a tenant named XYZ. Under this tenant, right? Under this tenant, I'm going to configure a VRF. So XYZ underscore. This is the name of my VRF, and this is how your ACI logical construct is designed. Under this, you know, I have a three bridge domain. One will be web bridge domain. One will be app bridge domain, and on on one will be DB bridge domain. Under this, I have a server. Uh, I mean, the subnet ten dot eleven dot three dot zero slash twenty four ten dot eleven dot two slash zero slash twenty four ten dot eleven dot one slash. One slash zero slash twenty four. Okay. So and all these are and the, the scope of the VRF is private. So I am not going to advertise or you know leak uh, between the these the subnets in between these VRFs. So first I'll do these construct. Then later we will saw that how we have to configure the contract filter and application profile to so that they can talk to each other. Okay, understood. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about. So I'm just going to have this, you know. So I have to first have what I have to configure. I have to configure the tenant. So let's go to tenant. <coughs> Under tenant, I'll add tenant. So let's say X Y Z is my tenant. I have to do nothing. Just submit. Right now, when I when I submit the tenant, after some time, my you know. Uh, you will be inside your tenant. Give, 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 give it some time you know, so that it can.
Okay. Now, so see, the, now once the, your tenant is configured, then as soon as you will configure your tenant, you will be inside your tenant. Now again, the second step would be you have to configure a VRF. So VRF can be configured by two two methods. Either you know, you go to the left side and on the VRF part, and then do the create VRF, or Very slowness. Or, you know, see there is a, you know, a yellow part or I mean orange part written here. You just need to select it and drag it. So as soon as you will select it and drag it, a window will open. You have to write it X, Y, Z, hyphen, V, R, F. Now. What does this mean? You know, I, I already communicated uh, you last uh, you know class that the policy control enforcement preference will what will be the enforce and and unenforced means enforced means all the EPG which will be a part of this VRF will need a contract to talk. I mean you will explicitly define web EPG to talk to app EPG and app EPG to talk DB EPG on which those ports you are only allowing to talk else everything will be blocked but if you are configuring the vrf in unenforced mode by default all your epg will talk to each other and there is no contract required so in which cases these both are you know used when you are migrating your existing data center to the network centric data aci infrastructure initially you put the vrf in unenforced mode so that you don't bother to configure any contract and by default everything is allowed inside your data center once your network centric migration is completed then you try to you know do it in force mode and then you configure a contract filters and apply it to the epg so that a particular server can talk to a particular server on your specified port else everything is blocked but for the initial migration you have to keep the you know uh, in uh, policy enforcement preference should be <coughs> enforced and its direction should be always ingress i mean when the traffic is coming inside then only you have to uh, you know configure it once it is once you configure the vrf to submit now once vrf is submit you have to configure the bridge domain so as per my there is a three bridge domain web app and db so what i will do i will put my cursor on a green select it and I will drag it inside this circle once I'll drag it a window will open here you will write web hyphen bridge domain right now you have to set the forwarding you do the optimization right then go to the L3 configuration. Here you have to define the subnets. Why? See, because in the bridge domain, I have written I need to configure a subnet, right? So I'll go to the L3 configuration. I'll enable the R flooding and everything, right? Under the subnet, I will put this plus sign. As soon as I will do the plus sign, a new window will come up. I'll write the gateway. So, what is the gateway of my web server? 10. Uh, 11. 3. Dot, let's suppose 224, or what I have defined it. Okay, yeah, 220, 254. Right. So, 2254.24 20, is my gateway. Now, I I want to put this server in, in private to VRF. I don't want to do the VRF leaking. Neither I don't want to do the uh, I, I don't want to advertise it this subnet to my external you know uh, domain so I'll put this into the external via uh, I mean private to the VRF and then I'll do the okay and then I'll go down I'll put okay 
now once i do that my bridge domain web bd will be configured so likewise i have to configure a bd two times more for the app bridge domain and for the uh, database so i'll do the same thing i'll write app hyphen bridge domain uh, let's suppose optimize configuration submit i'll do 10.11.2.254 slash 24 i have it to externally okay i'll go to the main no not l3 confirm r flooding let's suppose enabled and then i'll go so my and then i'll configure another one db hyphen this domain optimize l3 configuration plus sign 10.11.1.254 slash 24 drive it to vrf or flooding enable let's see and then okay so by doing this what i did i configure a tenant i can under my tenant i mean my customer i created a vrf under my vrf i created a three subnets which is i mean three subnets or you can say three vlans or you can say a three bridge domain in one bridge domain is or a one vlan will be my web vlan second will be the app vlan or third will be the bridge domain vlan or you can say web bd app bd and database bd 